Salam alaikum. You have to forgive me. I'm not used to uh, being given that early. Usually we're rushing at 10 before 10 and so on. Well, Ramadan Mubarak, two thirds is gone and we are ready to embark on the last 10 days. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength and accept all our acts of worship. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Surah Al-Qasas, chapter 28, I picked from it three stories uh, that I believe will leave us good, with good lessons. Uh, these three stories, the moral lesson from them that they can ruin you. So each, each story will, will, will shed light on certain aspect of the satanic whisper that can really ruin each one of us. So this is why I picked them and inshallah we will guard ourselves against them. Uh, I'll start with verse 15. Uh, all of them the same chapter as I said 28. And I will skip the Arabic because I'm sure you've heard it from our great, great reciters. I will just use the English. This is about Musa والسلام, before he received the revelation. And he entered the city at a time when it's, it's, it's verse 15. And he entered the city at a time when its people were not watching. And he found there two men fighting, one of his own people, means Jewish, and the other of his foes, Egyptian. Now the man of his own people appealed to him against his foe, and Moses struck him with his fist and made him, and made an end of him, means he killed him. He said, then he realized, this is a work of evil, Satan, for he is an enemy that manifestly misleads. Now, of course, here, uh, Moses was a believer in God, but he was not yet a messenger of God. And Moses lived for the longest time, he lived in the palace of Pharaoh. And you know, when you're in the palace of Pharaoh, the, se the center of power, no, nobody will dare to fight with you. So... Really, at the end, Moses never realized that how powerful he is, the strength that he has. You know, he's always lived comfortably, had security around him and so on. Now he finds himself dealing with the reality on, on the ground. And he responded, as you heard, to the Jewish guy who called upon him. And you guys know the story. What happened here is, brothers and sisters, what motivated Moses is what? No, no, before, before he became, what motivated him to get into the fight and help his Jewish man? It is his own people, right? It is Ben Israel, well, call him whatever you want, Jewish. But what happened is, no problem, what happened is you have, it's okay, sorry. What happened is, you have a race issue played the card. He is motivated by race. It's the same people. And then what happened is, he is supposed to be on the side of what? Of justice. So before you respond to that racism, you're supposed to find out who's right and who's wrong. Right? So he ended up by killing an innocent man because what racism does, it blinds you. And racism, now we are dealing with what in our country now? Nationalism. If you go to the Middle East, what are they dealing with? Sectarianism, the Sunni and the Shi'i. So Satan has found a way to really ruin people by finding the door into whether it is racism, whether it is sectarianism, whether it is nationalism, he'll find that. And the Quran here is cautioning us. Moses repented. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his repentance, but he immediately realized this is satanic. This is Satan. Right? And we all know the story of Satan, right? That it's race. My race is better than his race, and so on. So this is the first reminder that racism, nationalism, Whatever ism it is, sectarianism, whatever it is, watch carefully because this is the door of Satan to go and ruin the individual. 
All right. So I'll leave this one to another story of Pharaoh. It's verse 38 and verse 39. Again, I will skip the Arabic and then I will say the English. Pharaoh said, O chiefs, talking to his army and to his generals, no God do I know for you but myself. Therefore, O Haman, which is his minister, light me a kill to bake bricks out of clay and build me a lofty palace that I may mount up to the God of Moses. But as far as I am concerned, I think Moses is a liar. And he was arrogant and insolent, means rude and disrespectful, in the land beyond reason. He and his hosts, they thought that they would not have to return to us. So now Pharaoh presents us with another challenge, another door to the satanic whispers. Can someone tell me what, what has ruined Pharaoh here? That's arrogance eventually, but you're right, but a power. The guy is Pharaoh, you know how you say Pharaoh, you are a tyrant. And nowadays we have so many Pharaohs, right? You look at the word, we have so many Pharaohs now. And Pharaoh is intoxicated by the power. They have armies and they have generals and they have wealth and they have money and what, name it, they have it. And what happened is, I'm not talking about the harm that inflict on people. I'm talking about the harm now that inflict on themselves. Because I don't think any of us are going to be Pharaoh here. But, they, they, but what we have to watch carefully, what that can ruin him. That power can ruin him. How? The problem with Pharaoh and with many people like Pharaoh, when power intoxicates you and you feel that you, are, you have powers, you, you, you give yourself attributes that doesn't belong to you. He gave himself attributes that he is God. He's a divine. Right? I, ana rabbukum al -a'la. I am God. I am, I am divine. That false pride, that exactly what the brother mentioned, that lead to arrogance, what it does, brother and sisters, it makes you reach a point you are above everybody else and you are not ready to listen to anyone. Let me repeat that because I think this is very important. You reach a point that you feel you are above everybody else you are better than everybody else, and you are not ready to listen to anyone. Because the guidance will not always has to come from other sources. The Prophet said, The Prophet, the best of the best, he was guided. All humanity needs to be guided. But if you feel you are above, if you have that false pride, you have that arrogance, or whatever he in this case the political power what happened is it will ruin you because you will close the door on what on guidance does that make sense yes, so the second thing is as we know pharaoh take intoxicated pluck the door satan had grip on him and instead of him receiving the light that can take him from darkness to light that is gone and that ruined Pharaoh. So two things, racism can ruin you, power can intoxicate you and can also ruin you unless it is checked. So I'll move to the last story, which is Qarun. All of them, it, it's not coincidence that all of them is in the same chapter. So in Qarun, do, do we all know who Qarun is? Yeah. Rich man from the same community of Bani Israel. Are you happy now? Of Bani Israel. So the man is so rich, like, like who, who, who I think is so rich? Not, 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 not Brother Saleh, but someone richer. You know that uh, the guy from Amazon.com, what's his name, Je Jeff Bezos? He's so rich, right? Filthy rich. So this man, so rich, to the point where when they told him, why don't you give to the, to the people? Why don't you, you know, be generous and give what had, God had given you? He said, God, I made all this wealth on my own. I am it. So now, again, if you'll find arrogance, that here you'll find capitalism on, on, on its best, on its 
most powerful. Unfortunately, there are so many uh, uh, corporate America now, which they, they are much richer than countries. So when you are so rich, that also can corrupt the mind and can ruin you. And again, he, instead of him feeling that he needs to give to others, he realized that he is in no need of others. And really, if he took the, the time, but this is where Satan has a grip on him again. Who can get rich without people? Can you, Amazon.com, can he get rich without us? No. So no one can get rich, no matter how brilliant he is, without God gave him the mind, gave him the health, gave him the opportunity, without us, the people who are, you know, buying the products or whatever it is, we're helping that person to be rich. But again, arrogance blinds the people and he's not able to see all of that and that ruined him. And we all know the story how that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then we caused the earth to swallow him up and his house and he had not the least little party to help him against Allah, nor could he defend himself. These are, brother and sister, the three stories I wanted to remind you of today, whether racism, power of politics or of money, all of this, if they're not checked, they can ruin who we are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and protect us against all these evil that can ruin us. Wassalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, brother Hassan.